out with a pension of protesters. We've even got a police presence, would you believe? Not the turnout we expected, but a turnout's a turnout. And we're going straight to the MP's office. There's the police yeah, presence. Pensioners. Please, President. Open up the bar. Hello there. Well, as you can see, I was out this morning. I was quite busy this morning. Pensioner protest in our town. And uh, I'd like to point out. Our town is Labour Council controlled, or oh, has been, it's an ex-mining town. And Labour have been in for years, 90 odd years. Apart from the last general election when a Tory got in. Because our MP at the time went against the Brexit votes. 70 odd percent of the people in our town voted for Brexit <clears throat> and she actually went against that and obviously she's now back in the Tories got kicked out and she's uh, back in and she voted for the um, Winter fuel payments being taken off pensioners, would you believe? <clears throat> also, Labour councillors and indeed the MP were notified of the little protest today and not one of them decided to offer any support. And the conversation around UK pensions often lacks nuance, leading to misconceptions about the actual support pensioners receive. And I've heard it myself, many falsely claim the UK pensioners get £13,000 a year. But this is figure is significantly inflated, especially for most pensioners. So I thought I'd break down some actual situation and along with some other interesting issues that need addressing. Now the actual pension rates, and there's two main categories of state pension in the UK. The new state pension, which I get, is for people who retired after April the 6th, 2016. And it's a weekly rate of 20, uh, £221.20p. 20 now that equates to £11,502.40p a year. Now, the old state pension, and those are for people who retired before April 2016, their weekly rate is £169.50p. Now, that's the annual equivalent to £8,814 per year. And a key point is that the majority of UK pensioners receive the old state pension rate at £8,814 per year, which is far below the £13,000 per year often quoted. 
Only those who reach the state pension age after 2016 receive the new rate of £11,502. Now we've got some financial realities for UK pensioners. Uh, and one of them is the housing ownership misconception. We're all millionaires. It's often claimed that most pensioners own their own homes outright. Well, yeah, I do. And many of these homes are now worth significant sums due to property price, uh, price inflation. However, the value of one home, one's own doesn't directly impact day-to-day -day affordability. Especially since many of us retirees that is prefer to stay in their own homes rather than sell them to downsize then we've got private pension versus state pension now pensioners have paid into the national insurance system throughout their working lives often 35 45 years. I mean, in my case, it was 51 years. And a lot of people, it's around that, 50, 51 years. And in return, we all receive the state pension. In, this, in that same amount, I'd been invested into a private pension fund. It's highly probable that pensioners would be receiving a significantly higher annual income today. Private pensions are typically, typically linked to uh, the stock market and long-term investments which grow over time, whereas a state pension is a fixed benefit. Many workers during their lifetimes contributed to both national insurance and employer-based private pensions. But those who couldn't afford extra private pensions rely solely on the state pension. With this basic amount of £169.50 a week, that's the old state pension, it's challenging for pensioners to cover even basic living costs, especially given rising prices and the energy bills. The housing crisis and social support, the lack of affordable housing and social housing has worsened the situation. Over the years, social housing has been neglected by successive governments. As a result, younger generations face significant challenges in owning their own homes or finding affordable rents, creating generational tension. However, this issue isn't the fault of the pensioner. The older people did not have control over house price inflation. They simply bought homes when the prices were much lower. They have not benefited from a housing market to the extent that is often suggested. In, many, in fact, many older people face significant, and expenses, uh, significant expenses <clears throat> uh, related to maintaining their homes, such as property tax, insurance, the upkeep, which erodes their pension income. Those renting face even greater challenges. A pension income is rarely enough to cover the escalating rental costs. The state pension and the realities versus expectations. expectations. The issue with current state pension is that it's often below a living wage. Pensioners depend entirely on it can struggle to meet basic needs such as heating, especially in the cold months, groceries, health care costs, prescriptions, mobility aids, etc., council tax and other local taxes. 
In contrast, those who have been able to contribute to a private pension scheme enjoy a significantly higher standard of living in retirement. But for those who couldn't, the state pension remains a safety net, but a very low one. Ultimately, it's vital to remember that the state pensions are not handouts, but payments pensioners have earned through a lifetime of work. The current discussion about pensions and the perception that pensioners have too much needs to be reframed. The reality is that most pensioners receive far less than £13,000 that some people imagine and in fact many struggle to make ends meet. Make ends meet. Moreover, any wealth tied up in homes is largely irrelevant unless they decide to sell, which often isn't practicable for older people. The broader issue, such as the lack of affordable housing, property price inflation and the need for a better state pension require careful, balanced debate. The policy reforms that address the needs of both older and younger generations. Fairly. Instead of targeting pensioners, society must focus on addressing the systematic issues that have left both groups vulnerable. In the meantime, take care. Bye now.